welcome to another video in the continuation of the chapter chapter number one which is titled a solid state so in the last two videos we came to know about what are solids and uh, some basic characteristics of solids were taught to you in the first chapter in the first video and in the second video we came to know about packing fraction density and uh, also about the different types of unit cells and how many atoms are contained in a unit cell so today we will be knowing about that what are imperfections in solids now as the topic says imperfection now this imperfection this imperfection word it signifies that the solids that we see they have certain number of small large number of small crystals in them now these crystals they are not perfect they have some sort of defects in them because just you see everything in the world is not perfect so this logic is applicable on the solids also like whatever the solid that is seen to us it means in crystalline form in the earlier case it was said that in crystalline solids all the constituent particles will be well arranged and they will have a definite pattern of arrangement but when the crystallization occurs in a faster rate what happens that there originate some defect and this defect is known as imperfection in solids now this defection defect is mainly classified as point defects and line de line defect like if a defect is found only at a point then that is known as point defect and if it occurs in a line then that is known as line defect which we will be looking in this video today now the types of point defects will be studying the line defect is kept out of the syllabus in this current topic in this current book of 12 so there are basically three classifications for point defects the first one is stoichiometric defect the next one is non stoichiometric defect and the third one is a impurity defect now this classification again it is further made where your stoichiometric defect and non stoichiometric defect they are also classified non stoichiometric defect is classified as vacancy defect interstitial defect frankel defect and schottky defect and non stoichiometric defect is classified as metal excess defect and metal deficiency defect now in the coming slides we'll be looking into these defects one by one now for stoichiometric defect in these type of defect the overall stoichiometry of the solid is not disturbed like see the first one is vacancy defect now in case of your vacancy defect some lattice sites are vacant and this vacancy will decrease the density of the crystal and it develops on heating now what is this vacancy defect you see the next image will make it more clear like here you see if this is the structure for a solid where the constituent particles were present in a line this way these are the constituent particles of a solid which were present in a solid suppose these are the molecules of atoms present in a solid now when a vacancy defect is created vacancy defect another example is given you see where this one the two crystals are present at this position now in case of vacancy defect what will happen they will leave that place you see there is a vacancy which is created so this type of defect is known as vacancy defect and you can directly conclude here that in the earlier case the density was more here the density is less so in case of vacancy defect your density gets lower next is your interstitial defect now in case of interstitial defect what happens a constituent particle will occupy a interstitial site the constituent particle will occupy an interstitial site and this defect will increase the density of a crystal see the image here what happens that constituent particles were present in a straight line in this way but you see here in this line no constituent particles are present except one atom it has occupied an interstitial site interstitial site means in between these two lines one position has been occupied and similarly in between these two one position has been occupied now see equal number of atoms has come if one atom has come here one atom has come here also one atom has been has taken the position in the second line one has taken in the third line means equal number of atoms are inserting the interstitial site in this solid so here also the overall ratio if you are going to take 
then that ratio will be equal. So this type of defect is known as interstitial defect because the constituent particle occupy the interstitial position. Now you see this defect has increased the density. Earlier the number of atoms present were less, but now and the number of atoms has increased. So the density has increased. So interstitial defect, if you want to see, you can see using this. See what happens that from here the position was here, but it has changed the position and it is see it has occupied some interstitial site. So this is known as your interstitial defect. Next is your Frankel defect. Now Frankel defect, it is somehow similar to your uh, vacancy defect. In case of vacancy defect, what happens that it occupies, uh, sorry, interstitial defect. Here what happens that it occupies some of the interstitial site. So in case of Frankel defect, what happens? The smaller ions means this will only occur in ionic compounds. Ionic compounds like Na positive, NaCl suppose. And in case of NaCl, you have your Na as positive ion and Cl as the negative ion. So in between cation and anion, cation has the smaller size and anion has the greater size. So these cations, they can occupy some this interstitial position. Now, if you are considering here, suppose this green dots are your Na positive and this is your Cl negative. This is Na positive, this is your Cl negative. Then in this case, you see one of the Na positive from its, from its main location, it has just displaced and it has occupied some other position. So this defect is known as Frankel defect. It means that interstitial defect if occurs with uh, ionic molecule, then that is known as Frankel defect. They occupy some other position in the crystal. Now this Frankel defect, they do not alter the density of a compound because you see number of atoms present are equal. Earlier, 1, 2, 3, 4 in this line means if you count the total number of atoms present, ions present, then it will be equal to this because just it has changed the position from here, it has gone here. So here it does not alter the density. Next is your Schottky defect. Now, in case of Schottky defect, what happens? Equal number of positive charge and negative charge are missing from a compound. You see? Now, since in the earlier case, I already said that these all are stoichiometric defect. Stoichiometric. Stoichiometric defect. Now, in stoichiometric defect, what happens? That uh, the overall neutrality of the compound will not be disturbed. So, if you consider this small ball as positive and this one is negative charge, then if you will calculate, then here if x number of positive charges are present, then y number of negative charges are present. Means they are all equal and they will cancel out each other and that will be a neutral molecule. Similarly, when a Schottky defect occurs, equal number of positive charges and negative charges will be missing. Like here, one positive charge is gone. So earlier if it was x, then here it is x minus 1 and here it will be y minus 1. And then once again, the number will be same. So this is a neutral molecule. So this is a short key defect. Similarly, short key defect is like the vacancy defect, but when this vacancy defect occurs with an ionic molecule, that is termed as a short key defect. Here, you see, if you want to see there, it has been written here, like a type of vacancy defect. Here, equal number of cations and anions are missing to maintain the electrical neutrality. Next is your impurity defect. Now, impurity defect, as the name signifies, it means that in a perfect crystal, some foreign atoms will come. Now, you see the lines which are written you just concentrate on that i'll be showing you using this image which has been used here. suppose we have a crystal of any suppose we have a crystal of any cl now in a crystal of any cl if i am suppose it is kept in a surrounding where i have strontium in surrounding we have strontium in surrounding of this one then what will happen na has a charge of positive single positive monopositive and strontium has a charge dipositive. Now, what happens that this strontium dipositive, it has a tendency to remove any positive from its side. Then you see, impurity defect also comes under the stoichiometric defect. So here you see, any positive, one any positive is missing from this side. You see. Now, since I said that this is stoichiometric defect, so one any positive is missing, but here you see it has two positive charges. It means that if one any positive is missing from here, equal number of positive charges should be missing. So one any positive is missing from here, and to maintain the neutrality, one any positive charge is missing from here. Now the overall neutrality of the compound remains same, and in a NaCl crystal, NaCl atom, you have seen a strontium ion present. 
so this type of defect is known as impurity this atom is present to maintain the electrical neutrality of the compound that it should be a neutral compound because one positive charge is left so another positive charge should also left to accommodate this two positive charge so now next is your non stoichiometric defect now in case of your non stoichiometric defect what will happen that there will be a change in the neutrality it, now it can occur by two ways one is your metal excess due to anionic vacancy another one is metal excess due to cationic vacancy in, in this case you will have a vacancy for a positive charge in this case you will have a vacancy for a negative charge now here in the first in the first image you can see that uh, you had a in this case you see you have this one where uh, all the negative this b is showing the anions and e is showing the cation because they are having the positive charge now metal excess defect due to anion vacancy here you see a vacancy of anion is there because anion is the anion vacancy means see one negative ion is present here but to maintain this electrical neutrality no cation is present so this is due to an anion vacancy similarly here you see in the another image you have a extra cation extra cation is here but to maintain this you don't have a anion so this is known as a cationic vacancy so i'll give you the notes these are the theoretical parts which you will understand it better next this is your metal deficiency defect now in case of your metal deficiency defect what happens a cation is missing from the lattice site see this one all the iron that has been used it is fe2 positive and i also would like to tell you one that this metal deficiency defect is only seen in those compounds which have variable oxidation state like two oxidation state like iron it has oxidation state two positive or three positive then also copper it has mono positive and di positive so these type of compound which have two oxidation state this metals deficiency defect is seen only in them now here you see fe2 positive fe2 positive all are fe2 positive but two of them are fe3 positive it means that they are in this case they are they have less electron as compared to fe2 positive means the constituent the amount of iron which is present in this crystal it is less so this type of defect is known as metal deficiency defect next comes your electrical properties now electrical properties you already know conductors conductors means those which have the conductivity range between 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 7 next is your semiconductors which have the conductivity range between 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power 4 and uh, conduct insulator which has the conductivity range in between 10 to the power minus 22 10 to the power minus 10 ohm meter inverse this is the definition for conductors and uh, semiconductors and insulator now when does a substance conduct electricity and when it becomes a conductor when it becomes a semiconductor and when it becomes a insulator i will be explaining you this one now this theory is known as band theory now band theory says that electron in any metal it resides in the outermost shell the outermost shell electrons are important here the electrons in any metal it lives in the valence band see the electrons are distributed in two bands this is your valence band and this above one is your conduction band conduction band now bell bond band theory says that if the gap in between your valence band and conduction band is very less then that substance is a conductor if it is less than that is a semiconductor and if it is very high then that is a insulator it means that electron should be able to jump from this level to this level now you see in case of your conductors what happens that metals are conductor we all know now in case of conductors what happens is valence band and conduction band they are overlapping with one another they do not have any gap in between them they are overlapping means if this is the valence bond then this is the conduction band means they don't have any gap in between them but in case of your semiconductor there is a small gap in between them and this gap can be overcome by applying a little amount of heat or little amount of energy but in case of insulators what happen that this is very high this gap is very high which cannot be overcome by applying any means and uh, that is the reason they do not conduct electricity because the electron cannot jump from here valence band to the conduction band this is your band theory now there are uh, two types of semiconductor one is n type semiconductor another one is a p type semiconductor now in case of your n type semiconductor what happen 
that the semiconductors are doped with electron rich element now what is doping doping means mixing of some impurity now if n type semiconductor n stands for negative n stands for negative it means that suppose you have a semiconductor which is made up of silicon everywhere silicon is present now we all know that silicon for silicon is from the group of carbon so it has four outermost electron so this silicon it forms a covalent bond with all the outermost silicon like silicon one bond this side one bond this side one bond this side and another one this side similarly silicon one two three and another one will form by this side now what happens that if in a crystal if instead of one silicon one doping is done means one impurity is there and phosphorus now phosphorus is next to silicon now in case of phosphorus you will have five electrons now you see one electron comes extra now this phosphorus it uses one electron to form the bond with this one another electron with this another electron with this and another electron with this but one electron is left of this phosphorus and this is that one electron which occupies the interstitial site and this extra electron increase the conductivity and this type of semiconductor where the conductivity increases due to the presence of an extra electron that is known as the n type semiconductor another semiconductor is your p type semiconductor in case of p type semiconductor what happens in the earlier case the silicon we have doped with the electron rich means if it was silicon we have doped with phosphorus but here you see silicon it forms falls in from the group of carbon carbon silicon then here what happens that one group prior to silicon one group prior to silicon is boron so here this boron is doped with then in boron it has one electron left so see two electrons are used to form bond with this two with this and two with this means one electron from silicon one electron from boron boron has outermost electrons four boron has outermost electron not four sorry it has outermost electron three now boron has outermost electron three so one electron has been used with silicon one electron has been used with the silicon and one electron has been used with silicon now it does not have any electron to share with the silicon so one hole is created here and this hole increases the conductivity so this type of semiconductor where the conductivity increases due to the presence of an electron hole that is known as your p type semiconductor electron hole or electron vacancy is created and this type of conductor is known as your p type semiconductor next is your magnetic property now under the magnetic property you have to study paramagnetic diamagnetic ferromagnetic and antiferro and ferromagnetic now here is one diagram is given and this diagram shows you about the this, this is the shape of the alignment of this magnetic substance in case of ferromagnetic what happens all of them are aligned in the same direction in case of anti ferromagnetic means all of them are aligned equally above below above below above below so they cancel each other in case of ferromagnetic what happens that they are not equal in number if this is small this greater this is smaller and in case of paramagnetic what happens that alignment is not in even number if one is above another below means some random arrangement is there one then two will come below then again one is above one is above another one is above then again below in this way the magnetic moment is aligned for them now what is paramagnetic and what is diamagnetic if you remember your class 11 where we were discussing the structure of atom means the bonding pattern there i have told you what is paramagnetic and what is diamagnetic in case of paramagnetic paramagnetic and diamagnetic in case of paramagnetic all the electrons are paired here all the electrons will be paired and they repel the magnetic field they repel magnetic field and in case of diamagnetic substance all the electrons are paired and they are weakly attracted by the magnetic field so this is your paramagnetic diamagnetic this is the magnetic property so basically this video is completely of a theoretical concept where there is nothing much of practical knowledge that we can see but uh, in i'll be providing you the notes through which it will be more clear when you will write it so watch the video up to here thank you very much for watching today i'll be ending it here and uh, thank you for watching up to here thank you very much